Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I will demonstrate how to draft, cut and sew a fanny pack. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 Clothing Tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following items. This is nylon webbing and it is 35.5 inches long. You should seal both ends of the nylon webbing so as to avoid fraying. This is a shorter nylon webbing and it is 8 inches long. Plastic buckle, plastic buckle slider. This is 6 inches long zip and it has one zipper pull. This is a 20 inches long zip with two zipper pulls. I'll be using this as a stabilizer for the bag and this is foam. Some people call it foam wadding or bra foam. In place of this, you can use wadding, also known as fusible fleece. This is EST and I will use this as the interfacing for the bag. This is African print fabric, also known as Ankara, and I will be using this as the exterior fabric for the bag. Pins. Clips. Tape measure. lining and two pairs of big and small scissors i will now go ahead to draft the pattern for the fanny pack i will start by drawing a starting line on the a4 paper like this at the upper part so i will square a line across at the upper part like this and this will be the margin at the upper part I will also go ahead and square a line vertically downwards like this at the side and this will be the margin at the side. I will now go ahead to measure and mark 5.25 inches like this. At the side, I will measure and mark 3.5 inches like this. I will now connect these two points together with a curve. But first, I will draw a short horizontal line of about one inch long like this. I will now go ahead to connect the points together with my French curve. I will make sure that the curve is 6.75 inches long. And if I'm unable to achieve this value, I will adjust my French curve and say I have this value. So I'll use my tape measure to measure and confirm that the length of the curve is 6.75 inches. So I'll continue adjusting the curve until I have 6.75 inches. This is 6.75 inches. And this side will be cut on fold. And this is the top piece of the fanny pack. Next, I will draw another horizontal line like this. And I will measure and mark 6.75 inches long. The length of this, of the top piece, And the upper part of this second pattern that I intend to draw must be equal, equal in length and that is 6.75 inches. I will measure 6 inches like this. I will come down from this side by 1.5 inches. I will now measure and mark the 1.5 inches like this. I will now connect these two points together with a curve. 
but first i will also draw a horizontal line that is about one one inch long i will now connect the two points together with a curve like this on this side i will measure and mark half an inch downwards like this i will now square a horizontal line across like this at this end i will measure and mark 1.5 inches i will now go ahead to square a line vertically downwards like this I will connect these two points together like this with a slanted line using my straight edge. This side will be cut on fold. From this single pattern piece, I will be tracing out three pattern pieces. I will trace out the back of the uh, the back pattern piece for the fanny pack, the front pattern piece for the for the fanny pack, and the side cuts of the of the fanny pack. This outline that I'm showing with my pen is the back pattern piece of the fanny pack. This second outline that I'm showing with my pen is the front pattern piece for the for the fanny pack. And this third outline that I'm showing with my pen is the side cut of the fanny pack. I will now go ahead to trace out all the three pattern pieces on another paper using a tracing wheel. So I will trace out the back pattern piece first and I have another, pat another pattern underneath this one, another paper underneath this one. So after tracing out, I will go ahead to cut out the pattern piece. Although the tracing out is not visible on camera, but it's clearly visible off camera. So this pattern piece will be cut on fold and it is the back pattern piece. Next, I will trace out the front, the front pattern piece on another paper. Once I'm done tracing out the front pattern piece, I will also cut out the pattern piece. So this is the front pattern piece and it will be cut on fold. I will now go ahead and trace out the side cuts. The side cuts of the fanny pack. After tracing out, I will also cut out the, the, the cut pattern piece. So this is the side cut. Finally, I will now go ahead to cut out the top pattern piece, which I first drafted for the fanny pack, like this. So these are all the four pattern pieces needed to make the fanny pack. I will now go ahead and cut out all the pattern pieces on the exterior fabric, lining fabric and interfacing and also the foam using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. So now I've gone ahead to cut out all the pattern pieces using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance all around the pattern pieces. This is the front pattern piece which I cut on the exterior fabric on fold. On the lining fabric on fold on the interfacing also on fold 
and also on the foam also unfold I did the same thing for the back pattern pieces as you can see and also the top pattern piece As for the side cut, I cut two pieces on the exterior fabric and two pieces on the foam. I cut a pocket piece on the lining fabric. That is 7.5 inches by 8 inches. The foam stabilizer will be fixed to the exterior fabric. While the interfacing will be fused to all the lining pieces. So these are the back, the front and the top lining pieces and I've gone ahead to fuse the interface into all the pieces using my pressing iron and this is the pocket piece that is 7.5 inches by 8 inches long and I've also fused the interface into the wrong side. These are all the exterior pieces with the foam with the foam stabilizer the foam is non-fusible so what I would do is to go ahead and stitch the foam to the outer fabric on my sewing machine using 1 8 of an inch sewing allowance I will do this for all the exterior for all the exterior fabric pieces so now I'll go ahead and do the stitching so now I have gone ahead to stitch all the exterior pieces to the foam as you can see, if you are using wadding or fusible fleece in, in place of foam, all you need to do is iron all the exterior fabric pieces. You don't need to stitch. So I have here the front exterior piece and the pocket piece. And I've already drawn this rectangular box on the wrong side of the bucket, pocket piece. The box is one inch away from the top edge and one inch away from both sides. The top edge is the one that is 7.5 inches wide. I will now go ahead to notch the middle points of both the front exterior piece and the pocket piece at the top and also at the bottom. So now I've already drawn a guideline at the top edge of the front exterior fabric. I will now draw a middle line. The guideline is one inch away from the top edge. I will now pin the pocket piece to the main exterior piece like this. Right sides will be together and I will make sure that the middle point that the pocket piece is centralized and it is one inch away from the top edge. I will pin in place. After pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch all around the rectangular box like this. So I will now go ahead and do the stitching now on my sewing machine.
The stitching has been done as you can see. I will now go ahead to draw a line at the middle of the rectangular box. Like this, but first I will find the middle point at both ends. I will also draw a inward an inward facing triangle one quarter of an inch away from the two ends of the rectangular box. I will use this seam ripper to start the cut and I will use these small scissors to carefully cut the middle line and the inward, fa inward facing triangle making sure that I do not cut into the stitches. After cutting, I will take it to my ironing board and I will iron all the four edges first before turning the pockets to the wrong side. It is also advisable to trim the foam all around the rectangular box to about half of its original size so as to reduce the bulk all around the bulk rectangular box. After trimming, I will now turn the pocket to the wrong side and I will take it to my ironing board and give it a, th a thorough press. So now the ironing has been done as you can see. I will now bring out the short zip that is 6 inches long and has one zipper pull. Because I'm using zipper by the yard, I have already secured both ends of the, zip with, of the zip with some stitches so that I do not accidentally pull off the zipper pull. I will now place the zip beneath the rectangular box like this. You can secure the zip in place with a needle and thread first before taking it to, to the sewing machine to stitch in place. Or you can use a wonder tape. This is wash away wonder tape. After securing the zip in place, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place about 1 eighth of an inch away from the edge of the rectangular box. So I will go ahead and do the stitching now. While stitching, try as much as possible to pull back the lining pocket piece so that the lining is not visible on the right side of the back of stitching. So now the stitching has been done. I will now go ahead and fold the pocket into two like this and I will stitch all around the three open edges of the pocket like this using one quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. And we now have we now have a pocket at the front of the fanny pack. I will now bring out the lining front piece and the 20 inches long zipper with two zipper pulls. I will go ahead and notch the middle of the zipper like this. And also the middle of the lining at the top and also at the bottom. 
I will pin the zip to the top edge of the front exterior piece, making sure that the middle points match up. Right sides will be together. I will also pin the lining piece, right sides together, so that the zip is not sandwiched in between the two pieces. After pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. So I will go ahead and do the stitching now using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. I will also go ahead and top stitch about one eighth of an inch away from the top edge of the front piece like this. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. I will now bring out the top, the top pieces. I will knock the middle point of the top pieces like this at the top and also at the bottom for both the lining piece and the exterior fabric piece. So what I intend to do is to stitch this curved edge to the, to the top straight edge of the front piece. So I will place the top exterior piece on top of the front exterior piece like this. Right sides are together. And I will make sure that the middle do points match up. I will also knock the edges of the zipper tape so that it can bend to fit the curve of the top exterior piece. I will now I will pin in place. After pinning, I will pick up the top lining piece. Side of the top lining piece will be to the right side of the front lining piece and I will also pin together. I will also make sure that the middle points match up. After pinning the zip, after pinning the zip will be sandwiched in between the two pieces. I will now take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. So I will go ahead and do the stitching. But to make sewing easier, I will remove the top lining piece for now and I will stitch the exterior top piece to the zip first. After this, I will now sew the top lining piece following the exact same stitching line that I used for the first stitching. So I will now go ahead and stitch the lining piece now. I will now turn it to the right side and I will top stitch the top edge about one eighth of an inch away from the edge. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see. I will now go ahead to pin the long edges of the two side cut pieces to the sides of the front exterior piece. Right sides are together. The side cut, piece, the side cut pieces will extend above the top edge of the front exterior piece by about one quarter of an inch. I will pin in place. 
After pinning the two pieces in place, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. So I'll go ahead to do the stitching now. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. I will now bring out the back lining piece for the fanny pack. This is the back lining piece. I will also go ahead and notch the middle point at the top and also at the bottom. I will now pin the back of the fanny pack, making sure that the middle points match up. Right sides will be together. After pinning, I will stitch using half one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. So I will stitch all around and I will sew down the side cut pieces like this. So I will go ahead and do the stitching now on my sewing machine. If you are using a wide zipper tape like mine, you may need to fold the zipper tape like this. After sewing, please remember to sew down the side cut pieces at the side at the long edge where it was attached to the front exterior piece please do not forget to do this even though i did not show this i did not show that I, I lost the footage for this so now the stitching has been done i will now trim off the overhanging zipper tape I will now bring out the nylon webbing, the buckle and the buckle slider. I will now go ahead to insert the short nylon webbing to the female parts of the buckle like this. Just carefully watch what I'm doing. I will fold like this. And I will stitch in place on my sewing machine horizontally like this. So now the stitching has been done. I will now centralize the short webbing to the side cut like this, making sure the right side of the of the web of the webbing is facing down and it extends one inch beyond the side cut piece. I will pin in place and I will stitch in place. So now the stitching has been done. This is the back exterior piece. I will also notch the middle points at the upper part and also at the at the at the lower part i will now place it on top of the front piece like this right sides will be together i will pin in place making sure that the middle points match up and all the nylon straps are out of the way 
and tugged into the fanny pack. I will stitch all around using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance and I will leave a turning gap of about 3 to 4 inches to turn the fanny pack to the right side. So now the stitching has been done as you can see and this is the turning gap used to turn the fanny pack to the right side. So I will go ahead to do the turning out now. After turning the fanny pack to the right side, it will be wrong put, so I will go ahead and give it a thorough press on the ironing board using my iron. So now that has been done, I have done the ironing. And this is what the inside of the fanny packs look like, of the fanny pack looks like now. I will now go ahead to close this turning gap with a needle and thread. So I'll go ahead to keep the hand stitching. I will stitch in such a way that everything is concealed, the stitching is concealed and is not visible on the right side. So now the stitching, the hand stitching has been done. I will now go ahead to insert the strap slider like this. And also the male part of the buckle to the long nylon webbing like this. And also into the into the strap slider again like this I will now fold the edge So I will pin the folded edge first with my clips. I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see. And this is the final look of the fanny pack. So that's it guys, we are done. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing, and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.